Hello everyone, welcome to the second part of the tutorial about HNS. Now we are going to work with the GIS menu. The element of the GIS menu are going to be activated only if you have followed the tutorial up to the moment, if you have inserted properly your digital elevation model. The first thing that you can do is the terrain reconditioning. The terrain reconditioning menu is necessary only if you have in your uh, bus sign some man-made construction like walls, like channel, that are not properly kept in your digital terrain model. Normally, this is not necessary. Next step, you have to do the process of things. This will take some time and depends as well on the quality and on the size of your digital terrain model. This tool will detect all type of lake or ponds that you have in the area. For example, in our case, let's zoom in in a place where I know that I have a lake. This is a lake, a relatively big lake, and this has been now recognized as a such. We can find smaller pond. Of course, my digital terrain model has a good quality, therefore I have found relatively lot of small ponds. If you are using a bad digital terrain model like SRTM, you will have less pond and lake. You will not have any additional folders here. Next step is to process the drainage. This process will determine the flow direction and the flow accumulation for each grid cell in the terrain raster. Again, depending on the size of your basin and the quality of your digital elevation model, this process will take a lot of less time. Here we can see now the result if you right click on the map, you can display several different map layers. Here we have the map layers. I deselect all layers first. You see the terrain. You can see the sink, or let's call it the small lakes location. You can see the flow accumulation Let's zoom in a little bit more to better understand the flow accumulation. This is actually the direction of the water when it rains. Fine. Of course, again, the quality of this result depends on the quality of your digital terrain model. Next step will be to identify the streams. Here you need to put an area. If you put a big area, you will receive few big sub catchment. If you put a small area, you will receive many small catchment. This is like the resolution. Of course, if you have many small catchment, each catchment will have its own characteristic and somehow the quality of your simulation will improve. But of course also the amount of work that you need and the amount of information that you need automatically increase. Let's make some example. I put as a first example 0.3 square kilometer. Let's see what happens. I go to map layer again, I identify just the stream and the terrain model. Okay, those are the streams that the system has identified. Let's do it with a bigger value and let's see what is the difference. It will tell me that the previous result will be deleted. Now I put it one square kilometer. I have only one big stream. It's up to you to decide 
the resolution that you want for your uh, simulation I will put in this case 0 0.7 So with this number, I will have the main stream, the main river, and some affluent. Fine. Next step will be to insert a breakpoint. The breakpoint is actually a point where you want to receive the information. In this case, I am interested on the lower part of the river, on this plane that you can see here. That's the area where I want to have my IDP site. And I want to see if this area is flow prone or not. And I want to see how much water the river will receive at this point in order to be able to simulate later on with ECRAS the flooding analysis. So I zoom in. I want to put my refugees in this area here. I will take the breakpoint. I will put it somewhere here. You need to be exactly on the river. If you are outside of the river, the system will give you an error. This is the place where I want to know the amount of water, the flow of the river. I call it breakpoint one and create. Everything seems to be fine. At this point, I can create the sub basin. I go again to GIS and I click on delineate element. I can give a prefix, I can insert the junction if necessary where several streams go together, in my case it's not in necessary, and I can just click on delineate. This is now creating the sub basin based on my requested resolution of 0.7 square kilometer. It might take again some time, this again depending on the size of your bassin and the quality of your digital elevation model and on the capacity of your computer. I have created the sub bassin. Each sub bassin is linked with the river, so this means the water raining into this sub bassin runs down. To this small river and finally reach this point and goes down. Similar to this sub basin and similar to the other one. We can have a look at the characteristic of each sub basin. Let's go to parameters and characteristic and let's click on sub basin. Take some time to generate the characteristic. Here we have the initial selection because we have selected this one but we can click to none and then we have all the sub basin and also we can display the sub basin alphabetic so we have this sub basin like that so all together in our example we have more or less 21 sub basin we could at this point merge some very small sub basin like this one for example this one is very small but this is not necessary. Now you can see on your left, your element has been created for each sub basin. I'm just going to change the name of the first nine sub basin because this will help me to better display later on the sub basin. What I'm going to write just instead sub basin 4 i will write 0 4 and 0 1 and 0 2 like that so finally doing like that those sub basin are going to be better displayed don't forget to save from time to time your file click again on parameter sub basin area and you will see that the names have been changed okay perfect it's important that you export as well your sub basin because you might want to display this sub basin as well on your GIS. You go to GIS, export layers, sub basin, next. You choose the location it is under tutorial HMS GIS. 
I call it sort bosen. Finish. Now I have exported the sort bosen. And as well, I want to export the river identified streams. Let's see. At this point, let's open our quantum GIS and let's see if we have properly exported all the shape file. Let's see if those shape files are properly georeferent. It is important to export shape file because these are going to be used later for the land cover process. And as well, you might need to write a report describing your process. Therefore, you might need to develop some map. First, you need to verify that your GIS software has the right projection. With Quantum GIS, just go to Setting, Option, CRS. Here, you need to have your chosen projection, in this case, UTM Zone 32 North, here as well, and OK. And once this is done, you can import your layer. First one, the streams and the sub -basin. Open data source, vector, browse to the folder where you have saved your shapefile. Here I'm going to open the stream and the sub -basin. Add, OK, that's fine. Additionally, I am going to open the digital elevation model and now I will better display my digital terrain model. Just click twice on the layer, symbology and hill shape. OK, looks better. I put it below so that I can see. I can change as well the style of Bassin. I make it transparent. Yes. And as well, I change the style of the streams. I make it blue. Fine. Now, the sub bassin are not very visible. That's why I do it a little bit. Therefore, I do it on another color. Red, for example. OK, now it's better. Let's cross check that everything is properly georeferenced. I will just download an imagery for Europe every satellite is new and updated we are at the right position yes we are perfect so here you can see the sub basin we could as well identify the lakes everything seems to be correct and fine the simulated rivers strings seems to match with the real river don't forget to save your quantum gis file fine this is the end of the second part of hms tutorial